Ches 48. We are picking up. We got to the Mishnah yesterday, Baruch Hashem. We are picking up at the top of Mem Ches. Shalosh Hasherosim. Both said there are three different types of Hasheros. Now, what we're going to define what this means. The Baruch Mishnah says three different categories of, or three different ways in which trees become forbidden. Three different Hasheros. Number one, Ilan Shenotu. Sorry. If the tree was initially planted for the sake of Avodos Kochav, and the tree was originally planted for idolatrous purposes, then ultimately, again, the tree is Aser. Gido upislo l'shem Avodos Kochav. So Gido means the tree was pruned, or pislo means it was trimmed for Avodos purposes. And as we're both saying, in this case over here, if you look at Rashi, Rashi says, "Gido ovid kolchavim or Yisrael avodes kolchavim mutzarach avodes kolchavim lavod hagidulin shigad lo ba'me'ato." The idea over here in category number two is a case where I'm taking a tree, which was we'll see in the Gemara was originally planted for regular purposes or its regular tree purposes, memchas. Regular. So, so the. So, <laughs> good. I've gotten the green light by the Daffy Only Commission to continue. So we're gonna. So, 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 so again, se- second category was I took a tree, and we will go ahead and we will see exactly this case. But I'll just give you. I'll give you the case. The case is where the tree was planted for stamp purposes as a regular tree. Then what happens? A person trims the tree or prunes the tree with the intention of worshiping the tree, turning the tree into an avodah So meaning they're cleaning up the tree, and the tree is going to be worshipped from here on in. So the halacha is vehechlif, and then the tree grows, has additional growth. No shehechlif. Ultimately, again, I've also said the only part of the tree that is forbidden is the new growth. Uh, again, we're going to qualify this more in the Gemara. What the Mishnah seems to be saying is only the answer of is the new growth. So therefore, for example, if you wanted to go ahead and make the tree permitted again... Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If, did, is this yours? Okay, thank you so much. So if I wanted to go ahead and make the tree permitted again, so ultimately, again, all I have to do is to remove that which grew after the pruning and after the trimming, and the Iker tree would once again be permitted. If a person goes ahead and places an idol underneath the tree, so the Gibara says, So, so, so and then you remove the idol, the tree is permitted. So we'll say this third case seems to be, as long as the idol stands under the tree, the tree will be prohibited. But once the idol is removed from underneath the tree, the tree once again becomes permitted. So we'll say, these are our three categories of Asherah. Category number one is the tree is planted from the beginning for Avodah purposes. The tree is Aser. Case number two is the tree was planted for permitted purposes, but was pruned or trimmed for the sake of Avodah which we're going to understand means that the person's intention is now to begin to worship it from this point and on, in which case only that which grows after the pruning and trimming will be Aser. And therefore, if you take away the new growth, the old tree reverts back to its permitted status. In case number three, is an idol under which a st- an idol, or a pestle, is, is stationed. And when the, when the pestle is there, when the idol is there, so the tree is aser. Once the idol is removed, the tree becomes mutter. Says the Gemara. Amrit ve Rabbi Yanai. So both say in the Yeshiva Rabbi Yanai, they gave the following qualification. Vahu shehevrich veherkiv beguf al shavila. This is only true. The Mishnah statement is only true. And again, we'll qualify this in just a moment. Shehevrich, Rabbi say hevrich literally means layered, or here give means pruned. So only if you layered or you pruned with the, or, or things you will say, what this means over here is as follows. Here give, if you look at Rashi, Hivrich and here give means, I should say, really means grafted, right? The idea over here is, Rabbi Yana seems to be saying, the only time the tree becomes permitted is if you went ahead and you layered or you grafted the actual tree. So what does that mean? Vahanan, Gido Upis Lotanan, but one second. Our Mishnah says about say, that if you have a tree that was pr- planted for permitted purposes, and then you plant, you prune it or you trim it, then the new growth becomes prohibited. Why does Rabbi Yana bring down anything about layering or prune or or grafting? Says the Gemara. Rabbi Yana the Indian bitl itma. Oh, but Rabbi Yana's statement actually does not apply to transforming something into avodah zarah. Rather, it refers ultimately to going ahead and being mevakla avodah zarah. How so? The afal gav. 
Dehivrech vehirkiv begufo shal ilan, kinoto ma shehichlif shapir dami. Bosa, listen to this. What Rabbiana is coming to add is as follows. From the Mishnah, what do I learn? From the Mishnah, I learn the following case. I have a tree. We'll call it the stamp tree. When I say stamp tree, what does that mean? That means that halach alamaisa, again, the tree was planted for permitted purposes. Now, what do I do? What's the Mishnah's case? What's the Mishnah's case? What's the Mishnah's case? I, I trimmed it or I pruned it for the sake of Avodah What that means is that now from Mikan Allah going forward, this is going to be an Avodah tree. So whatever grows from this point and on will be Asr. If I want the tree to revert back to its permitted status, what do I do? Just remove the new growths, however you measure that. If you remove the new growths, ultimately, again, you can go the tree reverts back to its permitted status. But Biyana is coming to include some of those. Biyana says, not only that, but even if you grafted this tree, or even if Ramosi did what's called layering, Layering is this process. We saw some Masechus Makas. Or let's say you take a branch, you take a branch, you go ahead and you take the tip of the branch, you bend it into the ground, you embed it in the soil. What then happens is the branch takes root in the soil. Once those roots are established, what do you do? You snip it in the middle. So what you do is essentially you get another sapling from the same tree. What Rabbi Anna is coming to say is as follows. This, the, his illustration works better with the grafting case. Even if I took stama tree, and I grafted it. I grafted it with shame avodazara. Rabbi Yanai says, still all I have to do is what? If I want it to revert back. So obviously whatever grows from the grafting will be prohibited. But if I want the tree to revert back to its original permitted status, what do I have to do? Just remove the chilek that's been grafted. Why is that a chiddish? Ma'od the tema. Gevon de hevrech ve'er ki begufo shal ilan. Ki ilan shenato mitchila dami velitz sarkula. So you say, I might have thought that once you start getting into grafting, so I said, what happens with grafting and with layering? You're manipulating the ichor of the tree. You're manipulating the tree itself. I would have thought that once you start manipulating the tree itself for the purpose of what? For the purpose of going ahead and turning it into Abel Zara, I might have thought that then that becomes a, like a tree that was what? Planted for the purpose of Abel Zara Mitrila. And therefore the tree, the entire tree, should become Asr. Kamash Mulan Rabbi teaches us that that is not the case. Shabbos so we'll Rabbi just built on the Mishnah. Not only is it if you prune or if you trim the tree for the sake of Avodah Zarah that any new growths are going to be Asr, but even if you graft the tree, the Shem Avodah Zarah, only the graft and any additional growths will be Asr. If you were to remove the grafting, I don't know if that's the right Lashem, but you understand what I mean. If you were to remove the grafting and any additional growth, the tree will still become mutter. Even though, again, you've actively manipulated the actual tree itself, the tree is not transformed into a tree that was planted initially for Avod Lazar. Beautiful. Amr Shmuel. Listen to this. So we'll say if somebody bows down to a tree. So this is my Mishnah case of somebody who worships a tree. So Tosvasea Asura. Any additional growth, so we'll say from the time you bow down, anything that grows post bowing, post bowing, will be Asr. Massive Rabbi Elazar. So we'll also raise the question one second. That's not what the Mishnah says. The Mishnah says, Gido upislo la'avodas kochavim vehechlif, nota ma So we'll say, it comes along, comes along Rabbi Elazar, says one second. The Mishnah says that if you have a tree that was planted for not of all desire purposes, i.e., just a plain regular tree, in order to transform it into an achavta of Zara, what do you have to do? You have to do a maisa. It sounds like over here that you have to trim it or you have to prune it. And then after you trim it or prune it for Avodah Zara, then whatever grows from there is going to be asr mashiach, gido upislo in, lo gido upislo lo. So what Rabbi Lez is trying to say is as follows. The Mishnah Dafka seems to be saying that just stop bowing down to a tree doesn't do anything. It's only if you do a maisa, a maisa, like pruning or like trimming the tree, for the sake of Avodah Zarah, even then, Rabbi said, only that which grows after the pruning and trimming becomes Avodah Zarah. But just stamp bowing down to it does not transform it into Avodah Zarah. To which the Gemara says, Amalekha Shmuel, Shmuel will say the following, Hamani, Shamani, Rabbanani. So Rabbi said, listen to this, Shmuel will say, you're right, that is the Mishnah's opinion. And Rabbi said, this is going back to the, to the Sagi we had a few weeks, a few days ago. So, and that's the opinion of the Rabbanan. Rabbi said, what does the Rabbanan hold? The Rabbanan hold that a tree that was initially planted for regular purposes cannot be transformed into an Avodah Zarah tree, an Asherah tree, through simple worship. Look at Rashi. Hamani Rabbanani, the Pligi Alei Dreb Yossi Rabbi Yehuda, Va'amri Ilan Shnatu Labasov of Dumutar, the Rabbanah hold that if you have a tree planted for regular tree purposes and then was subsequently worshipped, it remains Mutar. 
Hilchach de Gidol, Kislo, Havi Kinatu Mitril Kach, the Mishum Gidol Machlift Feu Misra Valogilo, so we'll say Inachinam Shmuel says, the Mishnah reflects the view of the Rabbanon. The Rabbanon hold that when you plant a tree for regular purposes and then worship it, it does not transform it into an Asherah tree. The only time you can transform an originally permitted tree is when? is if you were to engage in an act of pruning or trimming, gido pislo, then anything that grows from that point and on is going to be usr. Now we'll say, now why? Because according to the Rabbanon, the act of pruning or trimming the tree is like what? Is like replanting it. Once you replant it, then, but again, only the replanting still only usr is what? That which grows, the, the addition. The ikr will still be permitted. Shmuel holds, on the other hand, what does Rabbi Yosef say? Da'amar. Elon Shnat Ulubasov of Du Asr, Bosa Shmuel on the other hand holds that if you have a tree that was initially planted for permitted purposes, but you subsequently worshipped it, that the tree itself can become Asr. So I will say, therefore, again, according to Shmuel's, according to Shmuel's logic, even if you were to just stamp bow down to a tree, right? Bow down to a tree, even if you didn't do the pruning or the trimming, the tree itself would still become Asr. Maske for Ravashi, so one second, Ravashi is one second. Mimait Rabiosi, Bayu Duvrabanan. How do you know that the Rabbanan and Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudu, are arguing about Tosafes, about the new part that grows on the tree after worship? So you say, well, we just, the way we just set this up over here, according to Shmuel, is that the Machlokis Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudu, is in a case of ultimately where you come to a tree that was planted originally for just stamp tree purposes, was permitted, you bow down to it. You bow down to it. Then what happens, Rabbi Yosei? Sounds like over here, Rabbi Yosei Yehuda says, anything that grows additionally will be Asr. The Rabbanon will say, no, it will be Mutter. The only case the Rabbanon will agree is when what? Is when you prune or you trim the tree, you did a Maisa, which is like the replanting of the tree. So I know they're arguing in Tosefes. Dilma, Tosefes, the Devriya call Asr, Obi Ikaro Pligi. listen to this dramatic, dramatic suggestion. Maybe, maybe, <coughs> everyone agrees that if you bow down to the tree, whatever grows post bowing, whatever grows post bowing will be asr. Maybe the machlokes are mostly between Rabbi Yosef Yehuda and the Rabbanon is what is the status of the ikr of the tree, right? What is the status ultimately again of the primary tree after you bow down to it? Rabbi Yosef by Yehuda suffer ikaronami asr. Rabbi Yosef by Yehuda will say that after you bow down to it, the entire tree becomes asr. Where we know it's from dichsev vasharei em tisrefun baish because the pasuk says. Their are Asheros. We'll say Asherim is plural. It's plural. Their Asheros you shall destroy by the fire. So if you look at Rashi, we'll say right across in Rashi, Dechsev Asherim Tisrefon, Asherim Treim Ashmo, Chad Lenatua Mitchil Lekach, Fekad Lenatua Lebasof Avdu. We'll say in Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda's model, two Asheros are referred to. What are the two Asheros? One is an Asherah that was originally planted in the Shem Asherah, and one was an Asherah that what? that was planted for stamp purposes and then subsequently worshipped. But according to Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda, when you worship it, you transform the entire tree into an Asherah tree. But Rabbanan Sabi, Rabbanan will say, Iker Ilan Shari. Rabbanan will say, no. If you have a tree originally planted for permitted purposes, and then what? You subsequently worship it. So Rabbanan will say, so again, it's only the Tosefes, the new growth, post-bowing growth, that will become Asr, but ultimately, again, the Ikr tree remains permitted. You shall cut down the Asherus. We'll say, what is the tree ultimately, again, where the, the that which you cut off it will be Asr, but the Ikr tree remains permitted. So Gemara says, Havi Omer, Ilan Shinato Lubasov Avdu. I would say that refers to a tree that was planted for permitted purposes, but ultimately was subsequently worshipped. So he says, one second, why didn't you bring up this piece of information when we had this machlokes earlier, Abosai, on Mem Gimel Amad Beis? Let me go, it's Mem Dalad Amad Beis, Mem Hem Amad Beis. Abosai, a few blocks ago, yeah, Mem Hem Amad Beis, sorry. So why didn't you bring up, why didn't you bring up this particular aspect of the machlokes when we had this original discussion between Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda and the Rabbanon? So the Gemara says, "V'chitema hadul ametar tzinar halchi epoch rabbanon le Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda or is Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda le Rabbanon." So we'll say. So maybe you'll say, "Okay, the truth is there's an easier way to reconcile these discussions and these contradictions by simply flipping the shitos." You can't do that. I'll tell you why. Imkain. We'll say first wide line. Imkain gido upislo man katanila. We'll say if that's the case, that we're going to start flipping the shitos 
then who is the author of our Mishnah? I'll tell you why. Plus, remember again, our Mishnah is a very specific case. What's our Mishnah's case? I have a tree planted that was planted for original permitted purposes. Then what happens? Then what happens? Gido Pislo, I prune it or I trim it. So I'll say, what does the Mishnah say? What does the Mishnah say? Anything which grows from that point in on will be prohibited. The Mashmos, of course, is what's the status of the Ikra, the Jewish status of the, of the primary tree? It's permitted. So I'll say, so now the Gemara asks, one second, whose opinion is that? So say, second, second wide line, based on what you just said, the Mishnah reflects no one's view. How so? According to what you just said, according to the Rabbanon, even without trimming or pruning, ultimately, again, the additional growth should be also why Rabbanon say, because how did we just set up the Rabbanon? The Rabbanon said that if you bow down to a tree, so again, the Iker tree remains permitted, but anything that grows after that will be prohibited, even without pruning, you don't need a Misa, you don't need a Misa. So according to Rabbanon, I don't need to go ahead and prune it and trim it in order for the Tosefes to become Aser. And if you want to say it affects even Rabbi Yehuda, bless you. Iker Ilan Mi'ar, Ikan Ikar Ilan Nami Aser. Both the current Rabbi Yehuda, he holds that what? That if you take a tree, even if the tree was originally planted for permitted purposes, and you bow down to that tree, and we'll see what happens to that tree. What happens? The whole thing becomes Aser. Not just the Tosefes, but the Iker Ilan as well. So we'll say it turns out that according to the way you interpreted the Machlokis between Rabbi Yossi, Barihut, and the Rabbanon, the Mishnah reflects neither of their opinions. To which the Gemara says, no, don't worry. E by Sim Rabbanon, V by Sim Rabbi Yossi, Barihut. The truth is, we can interpret the Mishnah both either reflecting the view of the Rabbanon or reflecting the view of Rabbi Yossi, Barihut, the house so. E by Sim Rabbi Yossi, Barihut, so we'll say, reflecting Rabbi Yossi, Barihut, the house so. Ki kam Rabbi Yossi, Barihut, Bolo, Gido, Pislo, Iker, Ilan, Aser. Listen to this. So the Gemara says the Mishnah can reflect the view of Rabbi Yosei Bar Yehuda. The Mishnah says, remember again, what did we say? What's the sheet of Rabbi Yosei Bar Yehuda? That if you go over and you bow down to a tree, so we'll say, what happens to the tree? What happens? The tree becomes Aval the Zara. Mamish the Iker, and obviously the Tosefes. When do we say that Rabbi Yosei holds that way? That's Dafk in a case where you did not prune and you did not trim. Because it was like, in a case where you didn't prune, you didn't trim, we'll call bestama. Stama, I will say, we assume that if a person bows down to a tree, what's his intention? What's his intention? What's his intention? Okay. The entire tree. But if you're going out of your way to prune and to trim, then what? Rabbi, even Rabbi Yossi will agree that your intention is on the tosefas. Your intention ultimately, again, is for that which is going to grow ultimately, again, from this point forward. So when your Megala das, that your intention is for the Tosefes, then even Rabbi Yossi will agree that only the additional part becomes part of the Abol Zara, but the Iker tree remains permitted. Gali Adaite Dibit Tosefes Nechale. Well, so the fact that ultimately, again, he is beginning the Abol Zara identity of this tree with an act of pruning. And remember, he's pruning and trimming for the sake of Abol Zara. That's how this is happening over here. He's doing it for the sake of Abol Zara. So he's showing that Davka, I want the Tosefes for Abol Zara, but not the Iker for Abol Zara. Or you can reflect the view of the Rabbana. How so? Gido Pislo, it's three chalei. So we'll say, listen to this. I need a case of Gido Pislo. Why? Sakadai Tchamila Kevan da Avalei Maise Begufe Iker Ilan Nami Lis. So we'll say, listen to this. According to the Rabbana, remember, according to the Rabbana, the Rabbana hold, at the least that we established it, is that even if a person stomp bows down to a tree without pruning and without trimming, that the Tosefes becomes Aser. So why did the Rabbana need the case of the Mishnah of the pruning and the trimming? So we'll say, this is amazing. Because this case is a Chiddush. I would have thought, according to the Rabbana, that in the case of pruning or trimming, or whatever we'll say, where you are actively manipulating the actual tree itself, I would have thought that in that case, what, what do we say? That the whole tree becomes Aser. Kamash no. Kamash that even in the case of pruning or trimming, where you're actively manipulating the goof of the tree, the Rabbana will always hold only the growth is the additional growth will be usher, but the ikr of the tree remains permitted. So we'll say, how do we pass in halacha lemaisa? Words, what do we do with this? What do we do with this? So the Gemara says, listen to this. Shukhanach, the Shukhanach says, this is in Yardea. Hilchos avondas kol chavim, semen kuf mem hei sif vav. Ilan, shenatu mitrila shehei nevan. So we'll say, if a tree 
was originally planted for Avodazar purposes, for the purpose of being worshipped. So Asr Banda. We'll say that's the easy case. We call that an Ashera. That's called an Ashera, right? An Ashera is a tree that was planted. Excellent. I don't know if you coughed or said Ashera, but it said, sound, sound, sound like Ashera. It was good enough to me. You sneeze. All right, good. All right, so it says it like this. We'll say, so again, if you have a tree, if you have a tree, that you planted purposely, initially, for the purpose of Avodah Zarah, we'll say that is called an Asherah Aser Banda. That's the easy case. Haya ila natua v'gidol v'gidol, o pis l'shem avodah zarah. We'll say case number two is you planted a tree. Now in this case, again, the tree was, this is our Mishnah. The tree was planted for stab purposes. It's a tree. And then what? You did a Maisa for the purpose of Avodah Zarah. You did a maisa, so you pruned it, right? You pruned it, or you trimmed it for the sake of avodas kochavim. Afilu hivrech veherkev bekufos shilon. Even if you grafted it, imam like like we saw, Shmuel said, even did something with the with the go for the yilon. Vahotzi srigim and vines, meaning additional shoots grow from it. Kori says srigim vaim aser bano. You cut off the shoots because they're aser bano. Ushar ha ilan mutter. And ultimately, again, the rest of the tree is mutter. So we'll say that is how we paskin halach lemaisa. So we we asking that when you have a tree that was per, planted for permitted purposes, and you subsequently so I say, remember again going back we asking like the rabbanon we say that if you had a tree that was planted for non avodah purposes hamishtachav and the you bow down to it that does not do anything to the tree the tree remains perfectly permitted the only time you can take a permitted tree and transform it into an avodah tree is when is if you do if you do something with the tree. If you prune it, or you're trimming it for the sake of Avodah Zarah, then that could transform the tree into Avodah Zarah. But even then, once you transform into Avodah Zarah, only the new growth, right? The old growth, the, what we call the Iker of the tree, will still remain permitted. Go, let's go back to Mishnah. Ezo Asherah. I will say, what is an Asherah? Now we'll, we'll discuss, we just said what's an Asherah, but now we're going to do the Mishnah saying, what's an Asherah tree? Kol, excuse me. Ezo Asherah, kol sheish takta avodas kol chavim. Any tree that has idolatry underneath it is called an Asherah tree. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon says, Kol Shimon says, no, the definition of an Asherah tree is any tree which is worshipped. Any tree which is worshipped, that's an Asherah tree. Umay So I'll say, the Mishnah tells a story. Right, there was an episode. Umay Sebetzidon, Bi'ilon Shayu Ovdin also, that there was a tree that they were worshipping. Umatsu Tachtav Gal, they found a pile of stones underneath the tree. Amran Rabbi Shimon Shimon says, "But kues agalaze." So he says, "Check, check underneath. Check what's underneath this pile." But ko umatsu bot sura. So they, I guess they unearthed the pile and they saw either that there was an image under the pile or that there were images on the stone in the pile. Amr lahen. So Rabbi Shimon said, "Howil ulut sura hein ovdin." So Rabbi Shimon says, "In this kind of case, it's clear that what are they worshiping?" Rabbi say, "They're not worshiping the tree, but rather they're worshiping the image underneath the tree." So not your lahen asayilan. Just simply remove the pile, ultimately again, and the tree becomes permitted. Says the Gemara, Ezu Asherah. Why does this Mishnah ask me what's an Asherah? We just learned in the, in the previous Mishnah, Vaha'anan, Shalosh Asherah Stinan. Both in the previous Mishnah, we just spoke about that, what? There are three different categories of Asherahs. Hachi Kama, this is what it means to say. Shtaylo Divriyakol, Va'achas Machlog, Zerushin Rabbanon. There are two categories of Asherah that everybody agrees on, but there is one category of Asherah which is subject to a dispute between Rabbi Shimon and the Rabbanu. Ezohi Asherah shenechluku bar Rabbi Shimon Chacham. And Rabbi say, what is the Asherah ultimately again that Rabbi Shimon and the Rabbanu argue about? Kosh yesh tachtea avodas kochavim. Right? And so Rabbi say, the Machlokia's case, the Machlokia's case is the case of where there is an idol underneath the tree. So Rabbi say, the fundamental Machlokia's is Rabbi Shimon, so the Rabbanu say, if there is an idol underneath the tree, that means, of course, the idol is Avodah Zarah, but what? The tree is also Avodah Zarah. Rabbi Shimon says, no. The only time the tree is Avodah Zarah is if you know what? Is if you know with certainty that they're worshipping the tree. But if there's just an Avodah Zarah under it, then again, Rabbi says, we'll see it, even according to Rabbi Shimon, as long as the Avodah Zarah is underneath the tree and, quote-unquote, benefiting from the tree, the tree will become Asr as well. But once you remove the Avodah Zarah, the tree is not assumed to be Avodah Zarah as well. Ezu Asherah Stam. So we'll say, what is the case of Stam Asherah? So just you should know. All right, all right we'll see the Halakha Mice in just a moment. So the Gemara says, Ezu Asherah Stam. We'll say, what is the case of Stam Asherah? Or what the Gemara really seems to be asking over here is as follows, which is, so look at Rashi. Ezu Asherah Stam. Lava Tiruzi Demastisim Kari. Elamil Sabah Pinafshikam. Tamudu Tepligi Bamarai. Ezu Asherah Stam. 
Ilan shalom hovrar lanu shi yashira be'eza simen nikar im yashira la. So we'll say, this is an independent discussion. Stam, let's say you just want to know, like, what are the telltale signs that your tree may be an ashera tree? Right? In other words, what, like, what, if you want to if you want to see if your tree is off the derech, you know, what, what, what are the telltale signs that your ashera may be having spiritual, that your tree may be having spiritual problems? How do you, how do you know if you, oh, how do you know if you have an at-risk tree? That's the Shaila. How, 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 how do you know if your tree is if your tree is at risk? Says the Gemara. The Gemara says as follows: Somerav kol shekomem yovshim tachta. What's that? If you see a bunch of priests sitting underneath your tree, then chances are you've gotten that Shaila, right? So kol shekomem yovshim tachta vein tomim peroset. And what's that? Say any tree. Now remember again, all kidding aside, any tree which you see that there are priests, avodazara priests, sit under it and they don't eat the fruit. So we'll say, if you see the daft not eating the fruit, so that's indicative that what? That they hold this tree is like, like, like Lahav del Hekdish. Lahav del Hekdish, right? So therefore, again, they're not partaking of this tree that belongs to their idol, because ultimately, again, it's Hekdish. Ushmul or Shmuel says, no. Afilu hani tam lebe naftri, nafritsi. You know, even, it's sarfi, excuse me. Even if they say these dates, they're sitting under a date tree, and they say these dates, are for the Avodazara, the Bay Natsra for the Bosse Natsra was the Avodazara. So, Asr, the Ramu, because we'll say what happens. So, we'll say, you see, what Shmuel's coming along and saying as follows. Raf said that the telltale sign of an Asherah tree is if the priests sit under it and they dafka don't eat the tree. I'm sorry, don't eat the fruit, right? Don't eat the fruit. Shmuel says, no, even if they consume the fruit, but they only consume the fruit. For religious practices and rites. For example, if they say the dates of this tree should be for Beinatsrafi, Asr, because we'll say what happens. Tirami Beishikra, the Shasile Biom Ida, because we'll say it was common among the idolaters that what would they do? They remember again, beer was often made from dates, date beer. So what would they do? And they had the dates of an Asherah tree, they would, they would use the dates to make beer, but that beer was only consumed on their Yamtif. So we'll say that's also a telltale sign of an Asherah. Amr Ameimar Ameimar said, Amr Li Sabi to Pompadisa, Hilchas Akishmua. So Ameimar said that the elders of Pompadisa told me that the halacha indeed follows Shmua. That even if they consume the dates of the tree, <coughs> nevertheless, what? Nevertheless, halacha lemaisa, as long as it's only consumed in the context of religious rites and rituals, that tree will still be considered to be an Asherah tree. So we'll say, sadly, passing the Machalgisim of Shimon and the Rabbanon. So the Shulchan Aruch says as follows: Shulchan Aruch says, Ilan shema amidin tachta lavodas kolchavin. If you have a tree and underneath the tree is an idol, calls manshi tachta asr ba'no. As long as the idol is underneath the tree, so the tree will be asr ba'no. Not lami tachta. However, again, if the tree is removed from underneath the idol, hare ze mutter. Right? Ultimately, again, so the tree becomes mutter. So we'll say, so again, in general, we assume that when there is an idol underneath the tree, it is the idol that is the Avodazara and not the tree. Obviously, if we see people worshipping the tree, then it's Avodazara. But assuming we don't see that, we assume it's the idol that's being worshipped, not the tree itself. Good. Oh, I found the key. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it says the Mishnah, thank you, Greg, thank you, Rachel. Lo yeshev v'tzila. So let's listen to this. Going on in the Asherah tree. You shouldn't sit underneath the shade of an Asherah tree. Okay. Vim yashav tar. Now we're going to discuss exactly what the, what the meaning of this statement is. But if you sat in the shade of the Asherah tree, you are tar. Velo yavar tachtel. But yet, you shouldn't pass underneath the Asherah tree. Vim avar tameh. And if you went ahead and you, pa- you did pass underneath the shade of the Asherah tree, you are tummy. Now, boss, now, obviously, the Mishnah just seemingly made two contradictory yeah. statements, right? Because first it says, I can't sit under the shade, and then if I did, right? And if I did, I shouldn't, but if I did, I'm tar. But yet, if I pass, so again, we'll discuss what this means in just a moment. So we'll say, well, take a look at Rashi. Rashi says, This shade that we permit you to sit under, Abosai, is not sitting underneath the actual shade of the branches. The imkain lo masni la vim ye shaftar the hakatani safe alo yavar tahta vim over top vim over tame ella mina ilon the halo hilchach lav all. But say actually, what we're going to see is we're going to see this is called sel sila, the extended shadow of the tree. Remember again, the shadow of the tree, the shadow of the tree, depending on the position of the sun, could extend beyond the actual, the actual overhang of its branches. So what the 
could, the, the, right, this right, the shadow could extend beyond the canopy of the tree. Thank you. Thank you. So therefore, the Mishnah is telling you over here, you shouldn't sit underneath the shadow of the tree, or you should say it differently. You shouldn't sit in the shadow of the tree, even if you are not under the canopy of the tree. Thank you. However, again, if you did sit in the shadow, but not under the canopy, you are tahor. However, again, you shouldn't pass underneath the canopy of the tree, and if you did so, you are tummy. The boss saying the reason you're going to be tummy, we're going to see is like Tomas Oel. Tomas Oel. Haisa gozela says harabim. So we'll say if halacha lemaisa. Let's say this is an interesting case. Let's say you have an asherah tree. We'll say which overhangs the rishas harabim. So what's the halacha? Va'avar tachtel and somebody was walking through the rishas harabim but passed underneath the tree. Ultimately, the individual will be tahor. So says the gemara. Let's, let's analyze this mishnah. Lo yeishe b'tzila. You shouldn't sit in its shadow or in its shade. Pshita. That's obvious. Amur rab bar bachan amur rab yochanan. Lo nitzcha ella letzel sila. So we'll say now the mission of letzel sila. We'll say means literally the shadow of the shadow, which means again the extension of the shadow that extends beyond the actual canopy of the tree. Ideally, Rabbi we'll say you shouldn't even sit in the shadow of the shadow of the asherah tree. Michlal de betzel kamasa. Now we'll say what this sounds like is that if you went ahead and you sat, Rabbi we'll say betzel kamasa literally means the shadow cast. By the height of the tree, that ultimately again they said Michlad the betzel kamasa im yashav tame. To which the Gemara says, "Lo, the afil betzel kamasa nami im yashav tar." No, even if you sat, I will say, in the extended shadow cast by the height of the tree, you'll also be tar. For how kamashan the afil betzel tzila lo yeshiv. I will say what it teaches me is that even in the shadow of the shadow, you should not sit. So I will say what the Mishnah is really teaching me is that what is that a person really has to avoid. Any, even any, any, any like um, any level of hanah, but even if it's not real hanah, I was going to say in this case over here, I'm standing in the extension of the shadow, which means I'm not even in the canopy of the tree. I'm benefiting from the extended shadow, whether it's the extended shadow of the height or the extended shadow of the canopy. I still can't get any kind of benefit from that. But if let's say I did sit underneath the shadow of, right, the extended shadow of the canopy, right, extended shadow of the canopy or of the extended height, Abitar, Pshita, Amra, Abra, Rechana, Amra, Biochana, Lo, Nitzricha, Elo, Letzel, Kamasa. Comes each year, also, even the extended shadow cast by the height of the tree. Mechlal, Letzel, Tzila, Afil, Lechat, Chil, Yeshiv. Does that tell me that even the shadow of the shadow I can't say, Lechat, Chil, Lo, HaKamashon, Dal, Afil, Letzel, Kamasa, Miyash, Avtar. So, we'll say, so, bottom line, what the Mishnah is teaching me is as follows, we'll say, you can't say, bottom line, is you can't sit in the shadow of the Asherah tree, even if what about site, even if you're not under the what? If you're not under the canopy. Right now, again, now the idea over here is because you're remember again, the act of sitting in the shadow of the Asherah tree is Hano. So therefore it's going to be us, so you shouldn't do it. If you did it, you're tar. Now both say, as we're going to see in just a moment, if you sit underneath the canopy, it's Mamish Tame Tomas Ohel. So if you sit in the shadow of the shadow, which I will say means that, that, that meaning I'm not under the canopy, but I'm still sitting in the shadow, so you shouldn't do it because it's still benefiting somewhat from the Asherah tree, so you should avoid that. But if you did sit there, you're tar. Why are you tar, Rabosai? Because since you're not underneath the canopy itself, there's no Tumas Ohel. So says the Gemara, Now remember again, what did the Mishnah say? The Mishnah said that if you went ahead and you, uh, if you pass, you should not pass underneath the canopy of the tree of the Asherah. And if you did pass underneath the canopy of the Asherah, you will be tame. My timer. Now, we'll say now, why is that? Why do you become tame if you pass underneath the canopy of the tree? Or as we'll say, this is mamish like this is like Tomas Ohel. So it says the Gemara. I'll tell you why. Because we'll say it is inevitable that underneath the, the underneath the canopy of the Asherah, there is avodah zara. There's going to be idolatry there. Whether there's an actual idol or whether there is avodah zara buried underneath the tree, there is always avodah zara. There's always actual idolatry in proximity to the tree, a proximity to an asherah. Money. Rabbi who's the this reflect? Rabbi Yudah Meseri. Yusanya. Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yudah Meseri. Omer. Menayim letakrov. Es avodah zara. Chom Hashem etami ba'ohel. Because Rabbi Yudah Meseri says, how do I know that avodah zara is metami ba'ohel? Rabbi Yossi, literally, if you're under the same roof, with idolatry, with Avodah Zarah, that what? That that Avodah Zarah transmits Tumah. Transmits Tumah to anyone else who's underneath the same roof. Shenemar, 
Vayitzmedu l'Baal Pa'ar, Vayochlu Zivchei Mesim. That literally, again, they worshipped the Baal Pa'ar, and they ate Zivchei Mesim. Ma Mesim, Matan Bosa, what do you see from here? You see that the Torah, the Torah compares Avod Zara to a corpse. Ma Mesim, Matan Bosa, what do just like a corpse? Is Matan Bosa, so if you're under the same roof as a corpse, one becomes Tomei. Af Takrova is Avod Zara, Kochav, and Matan Bosa, so to Rabbi say what? Avod Zara is also Matan Bosa, Therefore, again, the Mishnah says that if you pass underneath the canopy of the Asherah, you will become Tomei, you will become Tomei. Say, obviously, this Tomei is not biblical. Obviously, this is Rabbinic Tomei. But nevertheless, again, the Rabbanon word goes there, then ultimately, again, one becomes Tomei as a result of walking underneath the Asherah tree. Haisa Gozelas Esarabim, So let's say this is another interesting case. So says the Gemara. What's the case here? So Haisa goes out as Rabbi Avatakta Tar. We'll say, what's the case here? So again, I'm, let's say I'm walking Rishus Rabbin, and someone's Ashera tree extends over the Rishus Rabbin. So what does the that's the Mishnah's lashon of Gozelis? It's stealing part of the Rishus Rabbin. Meaning it's illegal. You're not your trees are not allowed to grow into Rishus Rabbin. So this Ashera tree is going into Rishus Rabbin. So we'll say, what's the halacha? Avatakta, and I passed under it Tahar. I am Tahar. Says the Gemara, what's going on up there? By the whole. Over or over? If I say here, the here with the Shaila is, do we read the Mishnah as over Tachta Tar or over Tachta Tar? So what's the difference? Over means what? Past tense. Ex post facto. If you went ahead and you passed underneath the Asherah, you'll be Tar. But what? L'chathchila, you shouldn't do it. Or do we read it as over? Which means what? L'chathchila, you're permitted to go under the tree. So it says, the Gemara, Rabbi Yitzchak ben Allah, Mishmei de Chizkiya, over over. So Rabbi Yitzchak ben Allah said, if you read the Mishnah as over, that even the Chathila, you're permitted to walk under the tree. Rabbi Yochanan Amar im Avar. And Rabbi Yochanan says, no, read it as if you pass through the Chathila, you shouldn't. But if you did, you're, you're, you are still tar. And of course, in reality, they're not arguing. Why? Had dircha achrina. Had dileka dircha achrina. Oh, Rabbi Yitzchak, watch this. What is it? What is it, Hinjan? Is there another path to take or not? Is there another way for me to get to my destination or not? So we'll say ultimately what? Take so, so CC is saying as follows. If there what? If there is another path, if there is another path, then what? I shouldn't go under the Asherah tree. But if I did go under the Asherah tree, nevertheless what? I'm still going to be tar. But if there is no other path, then even I am permitted to pass underneath the Asherah tree. But we'll say bottom line is what? Bottom line, the result is the same, which is, I'm going to be tar. I'm going to be tar, right? I will not become tummy. The shayla is the chatchila, can I do this or not? So the chatchila, if there's another path, don't do it. Don't do it. But la maisa, if there is no other path, then the chatchila, I can't do it. I'm going to listen, listen to this. My son, Rosh Hashanah, so Rosh Hashanah was once walking with his attendant. He said, Kimatis lahasam. So apparently, again, there was a place in Rosh Hashanah where everyone knew there was an Asherah overhanging. So Rosh Hashanah says to his attendant, listen, do me a favor. When we get to that spot, where there, the, where there is the Asherah overhang, Arihitani, let's help me run run past it quickly. Right? Help me run past it quickly. Help me run. Now, obviously, he's passing underneath the Asherah. What he's saying is, help me pass through it quickly. Let, let me help me, help me run. So let's, it says, what's the case here? If there's no other path, so Rav, Rav, Rav Shesh says, if there's another path, why do you have to, what, if there is not another path, excuse me, this is the only way to go, then what? There's, what's the rush? You don't have to run. It's lechatchila permitted for you to pass underneath this Asherah overhang. If there is another path, then what? Ki mishari. If Lamaisa, again, if there is another path, then what is running through it, right? It's like, I gotta taste Lashonar very quickly. I gotta taste Lashonar very, very, very quickly. Let me get this out. Let's say, so meaning if it's Asr, it's Asr. What does it make a difference if you do it slowly or you do it, or you do it quickly? So if there's another path, what is running through it to make a difference? The E D K six. You must listen to this. The Olam Deleka Dir Kachrina. In reality, the Rosh Hashanah of Rav Sheshes was there was no other path, and therefore again what Lechatchila he was permitted to walk under the Asherah. So why did he rush? The Adam Chashuv Shaini. See, I will say, listen to this. An Adam Chashem, an important person, people look at what he does. People look at how he conducts himself. Therefore, what? Therefore, what? I will say, therefore, in this case over here, Sheshach was concerned that people would see him walking underneath the Asherah. So I will say, 
You know, it's an amazing thing. People draw their conclusions based on what they perceive they see. So if people see Rav Shesha is walking underneath the Asherah tree, what conclusion could they glean from that? So I will say, they can glean its mutter. Now, they would, the, the conclusion they can glean from Rabosa is, no matter what the circumstances, there is another path, there isn't another path, you could always walk under an Asherah tree which overhangs Rosh Hasrabim, when in fact, that is an incorrect conclusion. The only time you could walk lechatchil underneath the Asherah tree is when there is no other path. Now, obviously, they don't know whether Rav Sheshis has another path or doesn't have another path. So Rav Sheshis, again, out of concern that people will glean, will glean conclusions from his actions. Not that Rabbi Sai, but he is he is a great person walking underneath an Asherah. So even though for him it's permitted underneath these circumstances, he just wants to hurry through it as quickly as possible. Good, Rabbi Sai, one more Mishnah. Listen to this, Rabbi Sai. So now let's say, again, I have an Asherah tree. I mean, I don't have an Asherah tree. There is an Asherah tree. But let's say this Asherah tree is right next to my property. And I want to plant things underneath the area of the Asherah tree. So the Mishnah says, you can plant underneath the Asherah tree. Yerakos b'yemos ha'gishanim. I can plant vegetables during the winter. Why, Rabbi Osai? Why? Avalo b'yemos ha'gishanim. Not during the summer. Why, Rabbi Osai? Because during the winter, the shade provided by the tree is detrimental. During the summer, the shade provided by the tree is beneficial. So therefore, during the winter, I could plant because I'm not benefiting from the Asherah. During the summer, I can't plant because I'm benefiting from the Asherah. V'acharizin, Rabbi Osei, charizin is literally lettuce. Lettuce, lo b'yemosachal, lo b'yemosachal, You can't plant it underneath the Asherah tree, neither during the summer nor during the winter. Apparently, again, lettuce always benefits from the shade. Therefore, you can't plant it underneath the Asherah. Rabbi Omer, af lo yurakas b'yemosachal. Rabbi says, you can't even plant vegetables. During the, during the winter, I was, remember again, the Tanakhama said, the Rabbanon said, you can't plant vegetables during the winter. Why? Because during the winter, the shade is actually harmful. It's actually harmful. So I'm not, not only am I not benefiting from the Asherah, I'm actually getting damaged by the Asherah. Rabbi Yossi says, no, even during the winter, you can't plant the vegetables. Why? Because also the problem is the leaves fall down on the growth, on the vegetables. The Havilahen Zeva. And we'll say fertilizer. So even though the shade might be detrimental, the falling leaves ultimately act as fertilizer and therefore again benefit the growth. Says the Gemara the Memra, the Rabbi Yossi Savar Zevizet Gorim Asr. And I will say, that apparently what Rabbi Yossi is saying is as follows. Even though again, it's the soil that causes the, the soil that causes the vegetables to grow and the soil is permitted, the fact that the Asherah contributes fertilizer in the form of what? In the form of what? In the form of its leaves, Rabosa is a ze the ze gorim. Both are causing the growth of the vegetables, the permitted soil as well as the pro- prohibited fertilizer, right? The leaves of the ashera. So the Gemara says that it's. Uh, I guess you're telling me that Rabbi Yossi holds ze the ze gorim aser. That Rabosa, when you have two things that cause the final result, and one of those two things is a permit is a prohibited item, that the result therefore is going to be aser. Rashi says over here ze the ze. Well, say in this case of the Mishnah, what? It is the prohibited leaves and the permitted soil that is causing the vegetables to grow. Yet Rabbi Yossi says it will be Asr. For Rabbanan Amri, Zev is a Gori Mutter. Yet Rabbanan apparently hold that what? Zev is a Gori Mutter. So that when you have two causes, right, in this case, right, Rabbanan says Zev is a Gori Mutter. That's the case of the Mishnah, because Rabbanan says you have the soil. We'll say, remember again, the Rabbanan aren't, aren't arguing on the Metzias. According to the Rabbanan, Rabbanan say, what else happens during the winter? What happens during the winter? The leaves fall. And, 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 and do act ultimately again as fertilizer. The Rabbanan aren't arguing with that. They can't argue with that fact. We'll say that's a, that's a, what's the right word? It's an agricultural reality. I'm just saying it's a fact. It's a Metzias. But yet apparently the Rabbanan holds Zev Zegorim is Mutter. The Rabbanan say, really, we look at the soil not as much as the leaves. So you might as well say again. So we we'll say, the Gemara is suggesting over here that the Machlokas in the Rabbi Yossi and the Rabbanon is actually a fundamental Machlokas on Zev Zegorim. When you have two causative factors, one of them is prohibited, to ultimately, again, does the end result, is the end result permitted or prohibited? The Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi or Zev Zegorim is Aser. The Rabbanon says Zev Zegorim is Mutter. Yet we learned about say just the opposite. This not Rabbi Yossi or Rabbi Yossi. Remember, we saw this just a little while ago in the case of what? Where you find an idol, a pestle, an idol that's made of metal. So what do you do with it? Rabbi Yossi Omer, Shochek Vizor Lerach. You probably see you grind up the metal, and what? You scatter it in the wind. Omatili, I mean, you throw it into the sea. And we'll say, so what? Amrulo, Amrulo, Afinas Ezebel. The Rabbanon say to Rabbi Yossi, you can't do that. Why? 
because then the ground up idol will become fertilizer for the fields. And the Pasuk says, you shall not get any benefit ultimately from what? From Avod So we'll say, what do you see from here? Rabbi Yossi is allowing you to go ahead and grind up the idol and scatter it. Scatter it even though it's going to fertilize the field. And there's going to be stuff that grows in the field. And yet, yet what? Rabbi Yossi says, it's mutter. What do you see from the words Rabbi Yossi hold? Zeve Zegorim is mutter. The Rabbanans say, no, you can't do this. The only thing you could do is you could discard it into the water, but you can't allow it to scatter over the field because it'll act as fertilizer, and the subsequent growth will be usser. The Rabbanans seem to hold that what Rabbanans say, Zev is is, is usser. So a contradiction. Kasha de Rabbanan de Rabbanan. Kasha de Rabbanan de Rabbanan. Kasha de Rabbanan de Rabbanan. Kasha de Rabbanan de Rabbanan de Rabbanan de Rabbanan so we'll say, I can resolve the contradiction of Yossi. How so? We'll say, first wide line, then Chesam and Days. Hasam de ka'azel li'ibud matir. Hachad de lo ka'azel li'ibud asr. So we'll say, there's a difference in the cases, we'll say. In the case of the idol, in the case of the idol, the idol is mamish totally being destroyed. So in that case of the idol is being destroyed, Rabbi Yossi doesn't see the idol dust as anything significant. And therefore, he doesn't see that as a ze ve goreim asr. On the other hand, we'll say, but in this case over here, where the tree is still in existence, the leaves are falling down, he sees the leaves as an active ingredient in the subsequent growth in the vegetables that are growing below. Ela dirabanon, adirabanon kashya. But I'll say ultimately again, but dirabanon shidos, dirabanon are contradicting themselves. Do they hold zevizay gorim asr, zevizay gorim muter? Which one is it? To which the Gemara says, epoch. The truth is, we'll say, the simplest resolution is switch the shidos. If you switch the shitos, ultimately, again, there's no contradiction. Or the other possibility, ultimately, is that you don't have to switch it. The Gemara says, Because Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi, you could resolve, as we just said before. In other words, Rabbi Yossi, you could resolve, as we just said, namely what Rabbi Yossi says. Rabbi Yossi makes a distinction between when the Avodah Zara is being totally destroyed versus when the Avodah Zara is intact. If the Avodah Zara is totally destroyed, then we don't view any kind of subsequent benefits from that Avodah Zara dust as a Zev Zagori. Masha'inkin, if the Avodah Zara is still intact, like in the case of the tree, we do view the leaves as a significant contributor to the subsequent growth. I, but what about the Rabbanon? Rabbanon, let's say, with Rabbi Yossi Kedeshin, of Rabbanon, Kedomer Rav Maribayid Rav Kahana, Masha Mashbiach Ba'ar Pogei Mabasar, Hachanami mashem ashpiach binavel pogeim bitzel. I'm also listening to this. The way to resolve the Rabbana will say is as follows. Now the Gemara here quotes a case by Psule Hamukdashim. Both say so the case by Psule Hamukdashim. If you look at Rashi, just a moment, Rashi says it's in the case of the Rabbana and the Rabbana Lokashia. Skip down in there two lines. Both says actually it's uh, two, four, six lines on the bottom of Rashi. Rashi says Ubud Rabbari bitmura. So listen to this. This is talking about a case of an animal that's a psulim muqdashim. So a psulim muqdashim means an animal that was muqdash, it was supposed to be a carbon, but then it developed some mum. So what do you do with this animal? You go out and you redeem it. You redeem it. You, you give the money to the animal, but you purchase them, and the animal essentially becomes permitted for regular use. However, even though it becomes permitted for regular use, that animal still retains some level of its original Kedusha. How is this manifest? I'm going to tell you an interesting fact. If you refuse to slaughter an animal, and you, so there are two different ways people would really want animals. They, either they would want it for the hide or they'd want it for the meat. Now, technically, you could use it for both, but here why it makes a distinction. If you wanted an animal for the hide, the way you would fl flay, mm -hmm. I think flay the animal is, you would hang it up by its feet, and you would go ahead and you would pull the hide down from the feet all the way down to the head. And what they would do is, they would make multiple incisions in the flesh to go ahead and preserve the hide. In other words, we'll say it's an incredible use of in life. You know people in life wanna have their cake and eat it too. You can't have it, or for this purpose, people wanna have their hide, right, and their steak and eat it too. You can't have both. To get a perfect hide, you have to make multiple cuts in the meat. So essentially, you ruin, you ruin multiple cuts of the meat but you get tied. Now, I will say, now usually this is a calculated decision. Why? Because usually the hide is going to be worth a lot more than the meat. So generally a person is going to say, okay, I'm a vater on the meat to get the hide. 
Both say, you can't go ahead and do that by an animal that's pursuing Mukdashin. Why? Because you end up ruining the meat in order to get the hide, and the act of ruining the meat is considered to be a lack of covet to an animal which was once sacrificial in nature. So we'll say that Mabi comes along and says, it's not a big deal. Why? The Gemara says, Mashem Ashbiach Ba'ar Pogim Babasar. So the Gemara says, ultimately, again, because at the end of the day, a person is not going to do it, because what they end up saving in the hide, you're going to lose out in the meat. Which we'll say, just an expression by saying that sometimes what you gain on one end, you lose on the other. So I'll just finish up that Rashi. Rashi says over here, Rashi says, V'sha'a avapi sha'or nimkar biyoker, so we'll say, ultimately, again, by P'sulim Mikdashin, you can't flay the animal this way because you end up really compromising the meat, and that's considered to be disparaging to an animal that was once sacrificial in nature. So we'll say, but one second. At the end of the day, you should let a person do this. Why? Because if a person knows they're going to get the hide out of this, they're willing to pay more money. If they're willing to pay more money, I will say, whose pocket does that money go into? To be samiktash hektish. So you should let the person do this. To which the Gemara says, "Mishani Rav Mari lekap seida demasha mashbiach b'demea or pogim b'demea basa." But I say, Rav Mari says. You don't really end up getting that much more. We'll say why. Because remember, when you preserve the hide, you lose the meat, right? And when you lose the meat, there's a cost to that also. So Rav Mari essentially says, at the end of the day, the amount of money you get for an animal which you get the hide from versus an animal that you could get all of the best cuts of meat from is kind of the same. It's a wash. So we'll say, so therefore, again, what does that have to do with our purposes? Ha'chenami mashamashbiach binavel pogeim bitzel. I will say that I'm going to tell you why the leaves of the Asherah acting as fertilizers is not a big deal. Why? It's true. When the leaves fall and fertilize the vegetables, are the vegetables benefiting from the fertilizer? And the answer is yes. But at the same time, the vegetables are being compromised. How about say? Through the shade. So ultimately, what you get, what the benefit you get from the leaves is ultimately negated from the detriment from the shade. So essentially, I will say that Rabbanon will say that when you're growing vegetables underneath the Asherah tree, it's a wash. It's a wash. You're not really considered to be benefiting from the Asherah because as much as you're benefiting from the leaves, ultimately, again, there's a detriment from the shade, and therefore, again, the Rabbanon permit the vegetables growing underneath the tree. So we'll say we'll stop over here. Again, we are going to pick up with this machlokis of Zeh, Zeh, Gorim, ultimately between Rabbi Yossi and the Rabbi Yossi.